Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Catalyst webinar series presented by the Education Committee for the Southern California PGA. The Catalyst webinar series is a bi-weekly educational platform for creating success in your club and your career. We are very proud and very excited to introduce the powers that be from Perry Golf. Perry Golf has been providing quality golf deluxe trips around the world since 1984. It's a company uh, powered and run by Gordon and Colin Dogleash. Uh, they are Scottish. We do have a Southern California representative for Perry Golf, uh, Howie Canode, based out of uh, San Diego. And uh, this morning, Gordon and Howie have been uh, kind enough to present uh, to the uh, section on Perry Golf and the benefits that it uh, can offer our members at our clubs and, of course, the benefits that us PGA members can receive uh, by coordinating these trips uh, around the world, golf destinations uh, extraordinaire. Good morning, Gordon. Good morning, Howie. Thanks for being on the Catalyst today. My Good morning, pleasure. John. Good morning, Good morning. Howie. Um, I'll start off. Uh, this is Howie. As John mentioned, I, I've been in the travel industry for many years, and the bulk of my experience is handling groups. I've managed group travel programs at range in size from eight to over 1,100 participants. Um, I realize you guys are real busy running your golf operations, so if you want to organize a group, I can do most of the heavy lifting and handle the details. Uh, I'm gonna turn the floor over to Gordon now, and he'll tell you all about Perry Golf and what we can offer. I'll be back a little bit later on in the presentation. Gordon, the floor is yours. Thank you, Howie. Uh, as, uh, my name is Gordon O'Gleish, president of Perry Golf. We established the business in 1984 with my brother, Colin, who is in our office in the United Kingdom. Uh, as I like to jokingly say, I've managed to go through life without a job interview or a resume, and I'm trying to hold on to that. Um, as you can see from this map, um, we offer a, a number of different destinations. The business originally started very simply, just my brother and myself, uh, golf trips from the United States to Scotland. Over the years, we've been very fortunate to expand that, uh, and, and the uh, orange on the map indicates destinations in which we operate trips. There's really three main parts to our uh, programs. One is the custom tours, and that really is when a group of four of your members or yourself plus seven members or whatever it might be come to us and say, we would like to go to Ireland or Scotland or England or New Zealand or wherever it might be. We've got 11 destinations in that grouping um, and we design a trip specifically for that uh, for that group. The second part of the business are the escorted tours where we've got six destinations, whereas uh, an escorted trip that will be for generally 24 or so passengers, uh, more couples that are involved there uh, and where one couple or or an individual or four individuals, whatever it might be, can sign up for an escorted tour and buy into the program and meet other travelers. Um, we like to refi refer to that as, as like-minded individuals and it never ceases to amaze me, you know, how, how much people enjoy each other's companies, each other's company, although they don't know each other when they start the trip. And then the third part of the business, which is also principally focused on uh, couples or, or their golf cruises. And I'll, I'll speak about all three programs as we move through here. But the golf cruises have been extremely successful. We've got 23 destinations in, in 2020 and 2021, uh, covering all the way from the South Pacific to the tip of Norway up in the north uh, and, and a lot of points in between. So we like to use the expression, it's always summer somewhere. So hopefully we can accommodate you or your members uh, at give any, any point in the year. Our business, as I mentioned, started in Scotland, St Andrews. Here's a picture of the, the classic view of the uh, Swilkin Bridge and four fellas having played the golf course. Um, we've got unrivaled access to St Andrews. Um, we've, uh, it, it's one thing I would keep in mind, and as I go through this, I'll try to share with you some just tidbits that might be useful in conversations with members. Um, but the booking window for St Andrews has changed, moved up quite considerably, even in the last five years. Uh, inventory becomes available for us on a commercial basis, basically in June of the year prior. And whereas 
we would still likely have inventory in December or January leading up to the summer of travel. Um, now it, that the, the booking window has really moved back into July, August, September of the year before. So uh, although we've still got availability for 2020 uh, on the old course, it's becoming a little bit slim pickings. And we're one of, you know, only a couple of companies that get significant, significant access. Um, but St. Andrews is just one of these iconic places. And, and one thing I always have said throughout my career is that from a golf professional's standpoint, I really believe that the knowledge base is beyond your out of bound stakes. So when the member comes into the shop, and he's in conversation with you there on the range or wherever, you know, uh, it, it, it enhances your career to be knowledgeable about golf throughout the world, uh, not just within you, the confines of your facility. Um, and St. Andrews is one of these places that it's helpful to be able to have a conversation about just because it is so iconic. We're also unique uh, in addition to the old course of St. Andrews and our access. We have, since 1987, we've had a full service in-house travel agency, uh, which we've got contracts with British Airways and Delta uh, for premium seats, which is something that many of your members would want. Um, that allows us to sell tickets at a discounted rate in conjunction with one of our packages. The reason that the air, air travel component's nice is that it gives your members a turnkey one, one call solution for their, their trip. Instead of having to get the land organized, and then figure out the air, we can take care of it all uh, together. And also it does, it gives us some flexibility in terms of benefits for PGA professionals when you travel uh, with your members. Um, and uh, also able to enjoy some of the, the discounted uh, business class seats that uh, fares that we've got. Over the years since 84, we've really tried to kind of innovate where we thought it made sense. Uh, the VIP golf coaches and the concierge drivers you know, early on, I thought that, uh, you know, the, the vehicles a little bit church bus like uh, simple uh, in the UK. And we started building our own uh, coaches designed. It was actually a, a, a boat builder interior that helped us to begin with and created some kind of custom seating and tables, which has become a bit of the norm for transportation for golfers in the British Isles. But I'm, I'm proud to say that we kind of led the charge. The other thing that is, is, is absolutely, utterly important to us are the quality of our people. Uh, our concierge drivers is how we refer to them. Um, they, uh, they manage the trip from start to finish. You take over seven of your members on a trip. Um, you're there to have a good time as well and interact with your membership and, uh, and uh, spend time with them. You're not there to worry about the, the, the exact workings of the trip. That's for our people to do. And our concierge drivers are terrific. And I can't tell you how proud of the number of times I get, you know, super positive notes from clients or clients that re request the same person year after year or whenever they, as frequently as they travel. But I know in, in your business, you know, it's the people that make all the difference. And uh, never a truer word has been said, particularly when they're with you for six or seven years, uh, sorry, six or seven days through the course of a, the course of a, a trip through the British Isles. And another innovation is on the golf cruise side of things. The first time we were involved with the golf cruise was in 1998. Um, over the years, we've refined it, we've chartered ships, uh, we've, we've worked with different cruise lines, and for the last seven years, we've worked with Azamara, uh, who are based, who are owned by Royal Caribbean. They've got three ships that are identical. And uh, we are very much integrated into the Azamara operation. It's not just that we are taking space on their ships. Uh, the most senior leadership at Azamara are, are completely uh, committed to and bought into the idea of golf cruises. And I genuinely feel that it shows throughout the experience and something that I would encourage you to think about and maybe discuss with the right members uh, that you have that you know enjoy travel uh, maybe haven't cruised before, but we've got an extremely robust uh, program of golf cruises around the world. Another thing that's an innovation goes goes back to the 35 years is, is is guaranteed U.S. dollar pricing. Might seem like a small issue, but remember that all of our trips are overseas, um, and you know you're dealing in local currency, and whether that's Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, or the British Isles, 
Um, you know, what you think you might be paying and what your members think you might be paying could be a different uh, a different number when they come to, pro to paying the final balance, oftentimes 60 or 90 days before. So, you know, we uh, uh, expectations in any business are paramount. And so we go in and, you know, we come up with a US price. You know, that's our responsibility to guarantee the pricing through some hedging that we do. We are assured that the the USD will the currency will change at that rate, and uh, you know it's a, it's a peace of mind that uh, if you're buying a six thousand dollar trip, it's a six thousand dollar trip. It's not a maybe six thousand dollar trip, and people uh, genuinely appreciate that. Another innovation that we uh, introduced was uh, an online trip calculator. You know, if you could imagine um, a number of your members sitting around in the locker room afterwards having a drink and they're speculating about that trip to the British Isles. Hey guys, we've always talked about it. Uh, why don't we do it? And one of the guys can take the lead on it uh, without spending a whole lot of time. Um, they can do it anonymously if they wish uh, on online on our website. And uh, you know, there's some, a number of sample schedules that are our most popular schedules. They put in a starting date, the number of golfers, select their transportation preference, and uh, they get an accurate price um, and we can you know it's something that that you can do on behalf of the members or you could do as kind of exploratory pricing with uh, for a trip that you might lead with your members to any of our 11 destinations um, but the one thing i would encourage you to do is if you, that gives you a sense of what the pricing might look like uh, is to reach out to one of our golf travel agents um, who can can refine that and there might be some tricks of ways of, of tweaking a trip to save some cost or arguably get more value out of the trip in terms of days of the week or whatever. There's a, there's the, so there is some flexibility, but, but in the first instance, we're very proud of the online pricing calculator, uh, which, which is also still remains unique in our industry. One thing I would emphasize is that uh, your members are already our clients. We do enjoy a uh, strong support from California and uh, from Southern California in particular. Uh, I think it's because of you know, some of the things that, that we do, do over the years and some of the innovations that we've introduced, whether it be cruising, this was a, a low escorted trip that I hosted down to uh, New Zealand last year and this was on a day that was slightly overcast. Uh, we enjoyed terrific weather that week, but uh, we were visiting some vineyards. It was really a, a lovely, lovely trip. But uh, a lot of your members are already our clients. Um, we reach out to your membership through SCGA uh, advertising. Uh, we have a full page in every issue recently. Um, and you know the demographics better than I do. 170,000 subscribers. Average age is uh, 62. So the point is that your members already know uh, who we are and kind of some sense of, of what we do. Uh, and that, that can only enhance that conversation that you may well have uh, with them. So we have um, the three different elements to the, the programs that I discussed. You know, we've got the custom trips, uh, we've got the escorted trips, which are more for, for uh, uh, couples, and then we've got the cruises, 20, 23 or 24 cruises in 2020 and 2021. I like to think that we've got a, a, a well thought through PGA Travel Rewards program. Uh, this is a terrific picture of the old head in Kinsale. I'm sure some of you have played there. I like to, to joke that this is the, the new tee that they're building a picture from. But uh, the way that we, we our PGA Travel Rewards program works for, for custom trips is that if you round up uh, seven members, um, your trip is comped. Uh, it's not, nothing more complicated than that. Um, the, uh, in addition to that, you receive 7% um, commission, uh, stipend, call it what you want, uh, on our programs to the British Isles. So the example would be that if you've got seven, seven members spending $6,000 on their trip, um, you would take seven times six, you get 42,000, and then you get 7% of that number. And the intent of that commission uh, is really to cover your expenses so that um, your member, you, you know, 
your airfares covered. You've got spending money for caddies, for drinks. You don't feel as though you're in an awkward position when you're on the trip and you can't put your hand into your pocket. You know, we realize that you're working on that trip. Now, some of your members might just think it's all fun and games uh, and you're just one of the lads. But the reality is you are working and uh, it, it's important that you're uh, treated in that fashion. So that's why we come up with this 7% uh, commission so that you've got money in your pocket to pay for your airfare, to pay for your caddies, to pay for any drinks. And, and, and you know, you're not you're not digging into into your hard earned salary um, to, to pay for that trip with your members when you're working. On the golf cruises, we uh, uh, the, the rule of thumb is yourself and your spouse with uh, 14 members. So if you can round up seven couples, uh, you and your spouse would enjoy the cruise on a complimentary basis. Now, the, the cruises are uh, longer in duration, generally. They're 12 to 14 days. All of this information is on our website. If you're, if you're interested, and we'll also get into how to best reach out to us and how we can uh, help you with your membership. But for you and your spouse or partner, um, seven, seven paid couples traveling, and then the cruise is comped for yourself and your traveling companion. In addition to that, the golf is, is comped for, for you as the professional on these golf cruises. So I see, I see generally how it kind of plays out. We will have um, a lot of husbands and wives, some, some will play, excuse me, both will play. And then there's other occasions where it's just the, you know, one, one of the, the husband or the wife that plays golf and, and the other one sightsees. So, you know, on the, on the uh, pro and spouse program under the travel rewards program with Azamara, your golf would be covered and we can come up with a discount. If your partner plays golf, we can certainly come up with a fav favorable pricing uh, for the golf program for somebody that is traveling with you. Another thing that we do is, is a 5% uh, uh, commission for each member booked directly with us. Uh, it takes no more than a, a simple email, uh, either to one of our agents that you might deal with or to Howie, um, to say, listen, please reach out to Mr. and Mrs. Smith or Mr. Jones. Uh, he's interested in a trip or they're interested in a trip to X, Y, or Z. Um, and, and we'll follow up with that. And if they book, you know, you'll just re receive a check in the mail. And, and I know that one of, the, one of the concerns oftentimes is that, you know, you you're feel as though you might be going out on a limb uh, with your membership. Um, and, and I can assure you after 35 years in this industry, uh, reputation uh, delivery is of paramount importance to us so I mean I, I can only I can only uh, try to kind of offer uh, my words in terms of how seriously we view uh, the guardianship of your members when they travel with us uh, we don't take it lightly reputation is everything been around the golf business far too long to uh, not do it properly and I think that we enjoy a a fairly enviable reputation in the industry. I asked uh, Steve Wilson, uh, some of you may well know, to uh, you know provide a testimonial. Steve's travelled with us with his members a number of times, and uh, you know I think that his comments here hopefully sums up uh, uh, is 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 indicative of the feedback that we get from both clients, your members, and you know your fellow professionals alike. <laughs> So thanks, Steve, for these kind words. Um, and then, you know, now that we've kind of laid out broadly what we do, uh, and happy to, I'll be happy to, after the fact, have a conversation with anybody about any of the specific specific programs. You know, there's only so much time we have, uh, but our cruises are escorted and our custom trips. You know, the next question really becomes, you know, how to gather a group. Over the years, I've seen any number of uh, uh, ideas and, and, and action items kicked around. Just purely as an aside, this is a, an image of some of our staff uh, in front of the Castle Stewart Clubhouse up in the north of Scotland, a great golf course. And, and uh, I'm terribly proud of, of uh, everybody in that 
in that picture. Uh, I mean, in terms of staff, we've many people that have been with us 10, 15, 20 plus years. And as I said before, it's, uh, it's the people that really make a difference. So anyway, how do you gather a group? I mean, you, once you've identified that an international trip is something that your membership would uh, gravitate towards, you know, you probably want to get with two or three potential group leaders. You know what the uh, Pied Pipers, who the Pied Pipers are in your club. Um, these are going to be the, the, uh, the, the, the important ones and then uh, creating a group around that. Um, and, and you just want to kind of sow the seed of how you of, of, of the idea of a trip. You don't have to sell the details, just sell it on the highest level in terms of enthusiasm of sharing time overseas, maybe playing the old head or the old course or going to New Zealand with, with your fellow members and enjoying the experience of travel and the culture of travel and all that. So, you know, please consider our golf travel experts as a resource as they are uh, as, you, as you start to gather that group. Encourage your members to reach out to us directly. If they've got some specific questions that you're you're not comfortable asking or you're distracted and you've got something else going on, we're there to back you up uh, at every step of the way. It's a, it's a very much of a joint effort. Now, Howie, who was introduced earlier, who's in Southern California, uh, I'll, I'll ask to come on now and kind of speak about the marketing assistance that he can help you with because some groups come together very easily. Other groups take a little bit more time and love to bring them together. Uh, but some of the things that, that we can we can help you with, um, Howie? Thanks, Gordon. Um, you know, I, uh, I've been in Southern California now for over 40 years in San Diego area. Um, and some of you guys may know me. I have competed in a lot of SCGA events in the last 10 years or so once I became a senior. So um, I know the area. I kind of understand the demographics a little bit. I know quite a few folks. And as I mentioned earlier, I've been in the travel business for over 35 years. Um, I'm here at Palma Valley Country Club. I live here and I'm a member here. Uh, prior to that, I was a member at San Diego Country Club for many years. So I kind of understand the demographics of the private clubs in Southern California. I know a lot of the folks. Uh, so I'd be happy to come out and meet with you and your members uh, if you've got some interest. I've been to Scotland and Ireland several times, as well as Australia and South Africa. And I've cruised with Azamara. So uh, I understand kind of the details of that. Um, I can help you organize itineraries and lay out the schedules and oversee the details. Um, we've got full color brochures that I can get to if, you, if you'd like to have them, or I can create some custom flyers for you. Um, I can also conduct private webinars similar to this. Uh, Perry Golf, I manage the webinar program for Perry Golf, so I've got a lot of experience at that. And uh, we can create very nice PowerPoint slideshows and make it very attractive. We can invite your members to come and participate in the webinars to build some enthusiasm. Um, I can also do uh, email blast using uh, constant contact software uh, to help you promote your groups. You know, I realize you guys are real busy just running your own operations. Uh, so if you've got interest, I can take care of all of the details for you and uh, make it a very easy, seamless uh, program. Uh, this is something I really enjoy doing, and you know I look forward to being of service. So, if you've got some interest, John can send you my contact information, and that's pretty much all I have to say at this point. So I'm going to turn it back over to John, and he'll take any questions you have, and I'll be here uh, along with Gordon to answer any of those that I can. So, John, floor is yours. 
Thank you, gentlemen. Fantastic. I mean, I think I speak for everybody on the call. We're putting together uh, a golf excursion around the world with my members at you know, various clubs that we've worked at. It's just about uh, the most fun you could have on the job. Um, some questions that have come in. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the different venues uh, that you guys uh, showcase and uh, kind of cater to? Of course, we know Scotland and we heard New Zealand on the call. But where all do you guys take us and where do we all go? Okay, so on the custom on the, the uh, custom basis, you know, we've got Scotland, England, Ireland, Wales in the British Isles, Spain, Portugal, France, Italy on continental Europe, Australia, New Zealand and South Africa. Um, each one of these, certainly the British Isles is unique, uh, arguably some of the best golf uh that's concentrated in one area of the british isles is the lancashire coast of england where you've got three open venues royal liverpool royal lytham and royal birkdale that you can play from one location uh and just and base yourself there and there's some terrific golf around there as well that are not open championship uh courses but they're every bit as good they just don't have the name recognition so uh you've got continental europe which you know, and, and uh, from experience, a place like Italy, uh, the golf is good. It's not great, but uh, our experience is that, that uh, you know, our clients, your members, enjoy the overall ambience of the food, the wine, the culture, the history, and the golf. And the golf is kind of what gets them over the hurdle. Um, you know, I'm leading a group down to South Africa in, in a few weeks. Um, and we'll play five rounds of golf, fan court over in George, uh, back in Cape Town, uh, which is a marvelous city, and then up on Safari and Kruger National Park. Again, a, a, a terrific experience. We can do that on a customized basis. We also run some escorted trips down to South Africa. Um, we run escorted trips to Argentina, to uh, Brazil and Peru down South America, uh, Asia, uh, to Thailand, to Cambodia and Vietnam. Now, the escorted trips will be once a year or maybe once every two years. Uh, but we, these escorted trips are turnkey, 24, 20 to 28 people, give or take. And, uh, you know, it's, as I said earlier, it's kind of a, the like-minded individuals that really enjoy, enjoy seeing and immersing themselves in a culture it's maybe 12 days, five, six rounds of golf. So it's not as golf intensive as a uh, customized trip, um, which is maybe to Scotland and it's seven rounds of golf in seven days. And they just, you know, a group of guys just want to go play golf. It's, you know, genuinely seeing it, seeing and feeling the, the culture somewhere else. And then the, on, the, on the cruise program, uh, we'll have the New Zealand slash Australia, the South Pacific cruise always sells particularly well. We've got a number in the Mediterranean that might be uh, Italy and France with Spain-Portugal combination. Um, there's ones now that will then go up the, up the coast of Norway, uh, play golf at the northernmost golf course in the world. There We've got a uh, cruise into the uh, Baltic, play golf in Russia, play golf in Sweden. Um, then our British Isles cruises for 20... Uh, 2021 we've got four departures our golf cruises around the british isles two that are around ireland and if you think about a destination that probably is the most ideal for a cruise ireland being an island uh with these golf courses spread around quite you know north south east west um the road's not being terrific um you know a cruise around ireland to play golf and play bally bunyan and Old Head and County Down and Port Rush without having to unpack, but one time uh, is probably the ideal. So our Irish cruises are, we also offer and have done so since 2013, a, a cruise to the Open Championship, uh, which will be 12 days and then, um, you know, two days at the Open at Royal St. George's or in 2021 when it comes back to St. Andrews. So we've got a, a very robust portfolio of destinations that we think we check off just about all the, the significant ones in uh, in golf. And, you know, our website at perrygolf.com is, is laid out to so you can 
search and look and enjoy as much as possible. And then as you see the bottom right hand side, the perigolf.com slash PGA takes you to our page uh, about the travel rewards program. A question came in from Bob Madsen. Uh, can we play with the locals at all on any of these excursions? That's the first part. The second part is, are there B&B &B possibilities or is it hotel stays only? Okay, good questions. The, and the, to the first question, the play with locals, uh, we can on occasion set that up. One of the, one of the honest challenges is that you're trying to find, and, and, and I understand the dynamics and the enjoyment of meeting locals and playing with locals. Um, one of the challenges is that, you know, over the years has become at the name clubs, it's become, you know, they've become uh, kind of overwhelmed, if you will, with visitor play and, and that kind of demand, whether it be a Royal Troon or a Prestwick or a, or a wherever that's on the, the kind of the main list of clubs. So then you start looking at, I'll call it secondary clubs, like a Crail or an Ely uh, in Scotland. And, you know, the, the, then you have to back into the weekend when the, mem when the, the locals are not working. Um, and so there's some logistical challenges uh, between the, the weekends and their club events and everything. But, you know, with enough notice um, and with an understanding that you're, you're not going to be playing at Muirfield with members, as a, as a, just as, a, as an example of one end of the spectrum, um, I'm not saying it, it can be it can be done with some forethought the bed and breakfast component is something that we've uh, struggled with we kind of prefer to if somebody comes to us and they want to get closer to a, what they might be described as a local experience we would steer towards the kind of the boutique hotels small boutique hotels um, that are whether it be the Hotel du Van in St Andrews uh, which is which is 200 yards behind the RNA clubhouse that we're looking at just now, um, and and it gives maybe a more a more Scottish local feel. One of the challenges of bed and breakfast is that you know you can have a fairly wide range of quality of accommodation. Generally, a bed and breakfast has got a very few, small number of rooms, um, and it's all about setting expectations. And as a business, we just don't feel that you're you're that while there's some terrific bed and breakfasts out there the risk uh, from room sizes to um, number of rooms for group accommodation, you know, even a small group, eight people for a bed and breakfast can be somewhat overwhelming. It's, it's you know, more than they really can, can comfortably accommodate. And so we, we keep away from that uh, as a general rule because it's kind of cre creates more bad will than good will. And what is the largest group for a customer? Uh, I'm sorry. What is the largest group for a custom tour that you would recommend? Well, there's a good one. Um, I'm a huge. The, to me, the, the the perfect size group is eight. It's yourself plus seven members. And I say that for a variety of reasons. Number one, if you just go out for dinner, doesn't matter where you are, and you have eight people around a dinner table, you can still have a conversation. For whatever reason, the minute you go to number nine, um, that conversation breaks up into different groups. And that's just, you know, how, how I've, I've seen it over the years. Um, eight is a number that you can, you know, you, there's enough that you can change and, and play in groups over the course of a week, and there's enough interaction. So that's, to me, the ideal size. What's the maximum? Um, you know, we've run trips for as many as, I remember one trip we did for a fella's 50th birthday years ago, and he had 104 people. He chartered a 737 or 757. Um, that's clearly on the excessive side. Uh, but the largest, I'm going to say, that's, that's manageable, that's enjoyable, I would go with the 24 to 28. That's kind of where we keep our escorted trips. And that number works. You don't lose completely the intimacy. Um, it, you're not too large, but that's about that's on the high side. Now, one word of caution, when you get to that size of group, you have to be at the very front of the, the, uh, the booking window because, you know, there's only a, a finite capacity for at the better hotels and golf courses. So really, you're probably 18 months in advance is what you need to be thinking about if you were to try to lead a group of that size to 
virtually any of our destinations. And uh, for um, on on the custom trips, what's available for non golfers on uh, on the golf cruises? So one of the reasons that the, on the golf cruises specifically, one of the reasons that we really enjoy working with Azamara, and and just to kind of dig her slightly down into the weeds on this, and it's and it's kind of far, it's, 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 it's part, it's answering the question, but it's also giving a little bit more background. We're not just taking space on the Azamara ships. We are involved with, it, and, and what I mean by that is, we're not just looking at their schedules and then figuring out where we can play golf. Um, we are involved with Azamara from the, the deployment uh, stage. So as Azamara are laying out their schedule for the coming years, uh, right now they'll be looking at 2022, uh, we are involved so we get input as to what ports, how long they're in port for, so that we can we make sure that we're checking off the best golf courses. We don't discover that we're in port for too short of a period of time to play the best golf course, and then uh, because of logistics, we've got to play a lesser choice. So that's why we feel as though that our golf programs are as good as they are. Secondly, and specifically to the question, you know, Azamara have, have embraced the concept of destination immersion. Cruise lines historically were known for turning up at nine o'clock in the morning and leaving at six o'clock at night. And people, they would disgorge their passengers on uh, to, the, to the island or wherever they were visiting, and then they'd be back on their ship for dinner at night. Azamara, with destination immersion, uh, they firmly believe that they want to keep you in port for as long as possible so that, that the travelers can enjoy the experience. So they might get somewhere at seven o'clock in the morning and leave at 11 o'clock the following night. So you're in port for, you know, 40, 39 hours or something like that. So you can get off and you can have dinner ashore, you can do whatever, but you can get to truly Im immerse yourself in the destination. So one of the reasons that's, so with that underlying concept, they secondly have focused very hard on, you know, creating the very best possible shore excursions. So to the question about do non-golfers have things to do on the golf cruises when the golfers are playing golf? Absolutely. Azamara have developed this, you know, series of shore excursions with, with multiple choices at each port of call that allow the non-golfers to be more than well taken care of. But importantly, the golfers also have time to enjoy the, 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 the port with their non-golfing partner or spouse. So, you know, there's plenty to do when, they're, when the golfers are playing golf and there's plenty to do when the golfers are not playing golf and they can do it together. So, short answer, yes. <laughs> okay, this comes from Eric Evans. He's down in Mexico, actually. And uh, his members are scattered all over the world who mostly fly private. How do you handle the logistics for a custom trip if they would like to all commute together, possibly using their own transportation? Would you typically work with their team on itineraries for flying, or do you recommend uh, chartering together? No, I mean, we've got a reasonable number of clients that, uh, that have got their own planes and come in, and come in privately. Um, you know, we can. It depends on on the, the the parameters of what they're trying to get done and what they think would be the most enjoyable. Um, you know, if if it's to go to the British Isles and play golf for five days in Scotland or Ireland or England, and they they're not moving around great distances, they, they can arrive. Some can arrive privately. Some can arrive by scheduled aircraft. Easy to do because the distances aren't large enough that they need to. Um, that they, they, that they, they need to use their planes to get from A to B. Um, you know, alternatively, if they were looking for a, a schedule that took advantage of their air, aircraft, um, and let's just say that that was a trip that was Scotland and Ireland and, you know, let's just say uh, the south of Spain, um, we could de develop a trip that was three nights in Scotland and three nights in Ireland and a couple of nights down at Valderrama and, you know, fly on home, and maybe on the, on the segments in between, where they're getting Scotland, Ireland, Spain, they can all fly, to, they can fly together using their uh, combined airlift. And then, you know, for the long haul, um, the folks that are flying commercial can just, you know, catch a commercial flight back. We can, we can take, we can understand, you know, what somebody is trying to do once 
you know that these these parameters have been shared with us and you know so if somebody's flying uh, let me just give you a very simple example if somebody tells us they're flying privately and they're going to the british isles and they're going for coming from the united states my advice is hey en enjoy your plane don't fly overnight just because 99 percent of the international scheduled service across the atlantic flies overnight you know leave at 10 o'clock in the morning get there at nine o'clock at night go to bed get a good night's sleep get up the next morning play off as opposed to you know getting in at eight in the morning just because that's the way that people think about going to to europe so i mean on the way back if you've got a plane you know fly somewhere and whether that's if you're starting in scotland fly to cork play the old head get back in the plane and fly home take advantage of it we're pretty good at uh, coming up with ways of uh, leveraging what somebody has to the maximum. Our job, what I keep on telling our, our staff, is our job is to be our clients' advocates on the ground. You know, we understand the realities of the logistics, but and we have to explain them and set expectations and also create the, 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 the best possible experience for them. You know, the one, you know, somebody might, you know, come to us and they, they, they ex, ex, explain this idea that, hey, we're all sitting together in this pub in Ireland and there's a little group in the back and they're playing on their guitars and they're drinking whiskey and there's sawdust on the floor and it's just a, a grand old time. And then somehow magically at the end of the night, we all climb up the stairs and we open a door and we're in the Four Seasons Hotel. And our job is to explain to that person that that's not how life is. If you're in a place with sawdust on the floor, likely it goes upstairs. And so you know, our job is to take somebody's expectations and marry them up with reality and do it as well as efficiently as we possibly can. How far in advance should, uh, should a group or a, a club professional start planning a trip? I you can know, let Gordon, if you like, I can take this one, Gordon. Okay. Um, uh, you know, I would recommend try to start 18 months out if you've never done a group before, uh, if it's something new. And the reason I say that is not so much to get the reservations for the golf courses and accommodations. It's really a lot of it revolves around the planning because a lot of times if you're trying to get seven members to agree on a particular itinerary and a, and a travel date, uh, it can be a little bit challenging for a number of reasons. A lot of things come into play. You've got family uh, reunions, birthdays, anniversaries, graduations. Uh, so a lot of times you'll start with one particular date or itinerary. You just have to massage it to a point where everybody can go and they're available. So that takes a little bit of time in itself. And then once you get to that point where you, everybody agrees on a date and itinerary, then we can go ahead and start uh, buttoning up the reservations and getting the thing ready to book to make reservations, uh, get the deposits in and get the trip going. So I would say that process normally can take, uh, you know, one to three, four months and then once everybody agrees, then you can get going. And then uh, the actual reservation process, once they get the deposits in, uh, you, the other thing is things change down the line that you have to kind of allow a little bit of time for. So in answer to the question, I'd say try to start at 18 months. But on the other hand, if you've got a group that's ready to go and they're everybody agrees on everything you can do it uh, within maybe six months as long as the space is available you know at the golf courses you want to play Back okay to you, John. what if i think this is our <laughs> final question what if the weather is bad um swing slow um <laughs> i uh you know it's funny in 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 all the years the only trip I can actually recall where the weather was so bad, uh, it was in 1986 and it was Mizuno Golf Company and they went to Spain and it rained and it rained and it rained uh, to the extent, and Spain isn't really designed for bad weather and I, they ultimately never played golf. And in 35 years, that's the only one that I'm, I can, I'm aware of ever recall where the weather was just miserable. Um, 
for the duration. Golf in the, in the British Isles, which is the, probably the place that the, the bad weather is, is, is uh, folks somehow have this picture of the British Isles and, and inclement weather. Uh, the weather is changeable. You know, you're going in high season. Uh, very rarely are golf courses closed um, because of, of rain, it's just because they've got sandy soil, it drains very well. Um, and, uh, you know, in, in, in fairness, virtually all of our clients and your members, they look at that as kind of part of the experience. Um, you know, they will go out and play golf at Troon or Muirfield or Dornock or wherever else in bad weather, in weather they, they probably wouldn't walk their dog at home um, when it does happen. And uh, but they just kind of like that's all part of it. And uh, so if a golf course is closed for bad weather, different story. You know, we'd obviously try to do our very best to re reschedule. We got re green fees refunded, all the usual things. But, uh, you know, bad weather is uh, is thankfully it's, it's really it's curiously not an issue. Um, and uh, uh, just for, for the reasons I, I described. You know, I'd like to just add a comment there, too, is, you know, uh, in recent years, the uh, development of the clothing and the accessories you need to play golf in tougher weather are excellent. Uh, we work with a company called Turtleson, and they have wonderful outwear. So, you uh, you know, we can help getting prepared. So, Kind of my uh, motto is going to, when going to the to the UK is you know prepare for the worst and hope for the best. But a lot of times weather is not an issue, and if you've got the right gear, uh, it makes it equally enjoyable. It's called, you, an, it's called an insurance policy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, gentlemen. Howie, Gordon, again, on behalf of the Education Committee for the Southern California PGA, thank you so much for taking the time to present this morning on Perry Golf. It's a wealth of information. It's, you know, if, you, if, if those PGA pros that are on the call have never done it, I, I know they want to. I certainly want to. And uh, if there's, uh, I'll forward out on the, uh, the quiz. I'll forward out Howie's contact information. Um, just for us to have, but uh, it would be great to be able to put together a trip of our members to go internationally, play famous places, spend time, uh, grow relationships, and just uh, just live the life, basically. Howie, Gordon, thank you very much for taking the time to present this morning. For all the Catalyst uh, webinar attendees, as usual, there will be a 10-question quiz on this morning's presentation that will be going out here shortly, uh, along with the recording for the YouTube um, uh, recording of this morning's presentation. Please take the quiz and return to Sharon Kerfman at PGAHQ.com. S. Kerfman, S C U R F M A N at PGAHQ.com. A score of 70% or better will earn one MSR credit for attending. I also want to remind everybody for October, October 24th, we're going to be having uh, Van Goodwin, who is a partner with uh, 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 Lytle Mendelssohn a uh, law firm specializing in employment law that's going to be presenting at the end of this month on the Catalyst webinar series. Again, guys, thank you very much. All the uh, Catalyst attendees, have a great day. Thank you, everybody, for supporting the Catalyst. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thank you.